I got in the cryo chamber at oh. minus 220. First minute was okay. Yeah. First minute, you're like, oh, this isn't that bad. Second minute, you say, uh, it's starting to get cold. And then by the third minute, you're going, oh, God. <laughs> we created this 14-day uh, intensive clinical program for PTSD, substance use, or traumatic brain injury that compresses two years of therapy into two weeks. Wow. This enabled us. How do you do that? So think of it this way. We're here at Gillette. Have you done physical therapy for some of your many injuries? I have. Once a week for an hour. Yeah. They twist and turn. They give you homework. You come back next week. You lie about doing everything. <laughs> of course, I of course I stretched four times a day. Twist for and turn. Minutes. Come back another week, and over time you get better. If you could get a hotel here and work out with the sports medicine team from eight in the morning to eight at night, yeah. doing everything from cryogenics, acupuncture. Are you working with CSPAR? We are doing some work with CSPAR. So, uh, so we were here a couple weeks ago. They took me in and uh, you gave me the the assessment which I think I scored, I don't remember the exact number, but it was in the 50s. So I, I kindly you know, acknowledge that I failed. You need uh, some work. But I need some work. Uh, and then we talked about, you know, then really talked about you know, now how do we combat these limitations that I have physically. And then I got in the cryo chamber at oh. minus 220. That's no joke. First minute was okay. Yeah. First minute you're like, oh, this isn't that bad. Second minute you say, uh, starting to get cold and then by the third minute you're going oh god <laughs> i'm good i gotta get out of here well so imagine now if you could go work with the the, the patriots team yeah me, you know sports medicine guys for eight hours a day 10 hours a day for 14 days straight would you do better than you did one hour a week for 12 i would weeks? jump on that opportunity would, would you get better faster than one hour a week absolutely for 12 weeks? so that that's what we did with the two-week program we have them from eight in the morning to eight at night doing a range of things packaged really well so that we unlock the, the challenges that they have and then we give them the skills that they need to deal with whatever the issues were moving forward and the, it's a game-changing um, program we've been running it now for seven years uh, we've had thousands of guys go through it and at this point now based on another program I'll share in a moment um, we do every two weeks 24 guys we fly them in from anywhere in the world at no cost Wow and we've 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 treated guys from all 50 states and flown them in from 13 countries. Um, because of the success of that and this polytrauma brain injury program we created for the special operations community, we now have one cohort group of 12 every single month that are all special operations team members. Every month. You, you mentioned when we started that you listened to episode 18 with Dr. Chris Free on operator syndrome. Talk, talk for a second about your perspective on operator syndrome. You know, define real quickly, it's, it's that really the aggregate experiences that you've had throughout you know, a career, a sustained career, 10, 20, 30 years, uh, are compounding. I, I think it's worse than he thinks it is. He's got a book coming out. Well, and the reason I say I think it's worse is we're doing research on that right now. And the, 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 the lead for our traumatic brain injury program is this amazing doctor uh, who actually received an award last night at the Army Navy Gala. Uh, his name's Ross Safan, and, and Ross is the chairman of the Department of Rehab Medicine for Harvard. He's the president of Spalding Rehab. He's the head of pm and for Mass General, and he runs the NFL Concussion that, Clinic. That's it? And he's the lead TBI guy since 2009 working with Wounded Warriors. Yeah, so anyone who says that they don't have time in a day to, to, to work to out Ross. or do certain things, yeah, it's a bunch of crap. So what Ross has proven and published is that with NFL players – because that's where he's been doing his research for the last decade. They have a shortened health span, not lifespan, health span. Um, they have a decreased lifespan. And on average, guys that have had a lot of concussive injury, it's nine years shorter than it would have been if they didn't have them. Nine years. Lifespan. Lifespan. The health span piece is the significantly high rates of chronic illness and injury to include diabetes, vascular, cardiovascular issues, uh, neurodegenerative issues, and early aging. Now, think of some old warriors that you bumped into on your yeah. trails, and you see the effect yeah. of that, right? They're called Sergeant Majors. Called Sergeant Majors, <laughs> and that's what 30 years does. Yeah. And so through our work, we've now seen almost 1,000 operators in the last two years, um, and we take a lot of data on them. And what we've learned already is the fact that, number one, 60% of their injuries take place in training. All of them have an indiscernible number of concussive injuries. And when you start trying to add up any concussive exposure, and I heard you talking about it a moment ago, those sound waves blasting through your body, yeah. every time you're at a range or a breaching operation, you feel a thump in your chest, a sonic wave just tore through your body. Right. And as you talk about it, you know, it, it affects all the cellular level and everything. Um, 
they have an indiscernible number, and then they have toxic exposure. So you've got all the effects that we know and have proven with the NFL players. They're going to be present with the operators. But then you add to that um, um, explosive concussive injuries and toxic exposure. It's not going to be a better story. It's going to be a worse story. Yeah. So we're now going to work and, and shift uh, some of our efforts so that we can get ahead of this and bend the curve. Um, if, we're, if, we, if, we, if, if what we hope to accomplish happens, we're going to be able to figure out what are the downstream chronic illnesses associated with concussive injury that we see in operations team members. And then when can we start looking at them instead of 50, 48, right. let's look at them at 32. And if we see the early signs of diabetes, if we see the early signs of cardiovascular, we can nip it in the bud before it even hits. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm reminded at, at also of um, uh, Allison Brager, uh, who you may know. So Dr. Allison Brager, you know, the, who is you know, specializes in sleep. Yep. And her and I have had a n- numerous conversations about the effect of lack of sleep. So now if you're taking the factors that you're talking about, you're going to lose nine years on your life because of these concussive events. Now you're going to lose another three, four, five years because of, because of a lack of sleep. That's a lot of time. That's 15 years of your life. So we know going forward, the areas we want to find better outcomes for are certainly the mental health. We have that pretty well covered, but we're always getting better. We're looking at cognitive function to improve cognitive function for guys with memory loss and other stuff. And we're doing really good with that. And then we want to get into better pain management because that's another one of the top issues we're dealing with, sleep issues, and then all those chronic conditions to include cancer. Right. We're going to try and develop a cancer screening program so that as our operators come through the program, we have the right folks at the Mass General Mass Brigham General Brigham Cancer Program, which is their aspirational goal is to become the best in the world. Yeah. We want to be able to um, you know, rotate our operators through that care as well. 